Once access to the interior of the tooth has been created, the next step of the root canal procedure involves removing debris and contaminants harbored within the tooth's pulp chamber and root canals. This can include bacteria, the waste products and toxins they have created, as well as remnants of or breakdown products derived from the original pulp tissue. As an initial step towards completing this task, the dentist must first determine the length of each of the tooth's individual root canals. This measurement is required because during treatment, the dentist's goal will be to cleanse the full length of each canal without allowing any instruments to extend past its end. If they extend too far, the result will be the irritation and inflammation of the tissues that surround the tooth's root. Of course, if they aren't used to clean far enough, debris and contaminants will be left behind. To make this measurement, the dentist will position a metal file in the tooth's root canal to that location they anticipate approximates the canal's endpoint. They will then either take an x-ray of the tooth and evaluate the position of the file in that image, or, if they have one available, use an electronic device that when touched to the file can make an indication for them. Cleansing the interior of the tooth is a twofold process. One aspect involves the use of what is termed an irrigating solution. The idea here is simply the use of a liquid to flush out the tooth so to remove debris that was either already present or has been created during the cleaning process. As an additional benefit, some types of irrigating solutions, like bleach, can also help to disinfect the tooth. The other aspect of the cleaning process involves the use of root canal files. These files look like large straight pins, with the exception that their surface is grooved. They're used in an up and down and sometimes twisting motion that allows their cutting edges to rasp the walls of a canal. A dentist will either work a file with their fingers or place it in a dental handpiece that can create an appropriate rasping action for them. When cleaning any one root canal, a dentist will make use of several files, probably at least a half a dozen or more, each of which has a slightly larger diameter than the one preceding it. As each file is used, the size of the canal will gradually be enlarged. This is needed because it's a way of removing those contaminants that have become embedded within the canal's walls. Additionally, a larger canal allows for more widespread penetration of the irrigating solution in the tooth. Tooth irrigation is an important part of the cleaning process and is generally repeated after the use of each file. Once the tooth's root canal system has been cleansed, the dentist has once again reached a potential stopping point. Some root canal cases are best treated with a two-step approach, and when this applies, the dentist will place a temporary filling at this point and reschedule the patient for another visit at a later date. In other cases, the dentist will simply continue on with the next stage of treatment. This is the scenario described in the next segment of this DentalPictureShow.com video series.